I've always considered myself a songwriter. Since the day that I moved here in 1978 and somebody gave me one of the few wise uh, pieces of advice that I got was, you will be a songwriter when you wake up and consider yourself a songwriter. And so I thought, well, that sounds kind of hard, but kind of easy. So I wrote a few songs and I just went, I'm a songwriter. Well, there used to be, when I first started, it was always I'd, I'd get a melody in my head. And uh, then I learned to get a melody with a title in my head. So that was always the way for, oh God, you know, the first uh, 10 to 15 years that I was a songwriter. So I was very melody influenced from probably Paul McCartney and, and, and acts, artists like that. Uh, and then as I got more mature and older, I, I, I started to learn how to write in a lot of different ways. So a lot of times a lyric will influence it, sometimes a melody. And it's always different now. I think the longer you do something, the more you have fun with it. I, I think just to be elastic. Uh, to be malleable to some degree. I think, um, uh, as I said, I, I used to have a very strong opinion about melody. It's like the melody would be a very strict do, 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 whatever. And I'd try to fit those lyrics into that melody. So then it becomes like a very, sometimes a difficult New York Times crossword puzzle or something. Th that's not the most fun way to write. So the more I can break that down and say, okay, I'm not finding a word that really works. <clears throat> or one that I like. You cave that melody in, you try something completely different. Same thing with chords. Or if you're coming from the word place first, it works in the same exact way. Maybe you've got a melody that's, that's really driving you in a different direction and you're like, you have to sacrifice a line to make something a better hook. It's just always being able to be flexible, I think is the, is the biggest key to being a good songwriter. One that I possess and one that I really do not possess. Um, brutal honesty. Um, I don't second guess myself a lot. I hear something and if I like what I'm hearing, if I know, uh, I pretty much know and trust my instincts now after doing it for so long. Um, but I also think there's a bit of th <clears throat> a therapy training that a producer should probably have. I'm not always the best at that. I'm not always the best at delivering the message in a pillow for a young artist who's very sensitive uh, to hear. And I think that's something that I'm learning all the time, just to deal with fragile egos and things like that and the nature where it doesn't, you, know, and you never want to discourage anyone. Somebody told me, told me once just not to be too precious about your ideas. You know, they're just ideas. They just, you know, they come and they go and the minute you think one is like something you need to stick to and fight for, you wake up the next morning and it's like, okay, that wasn't that great. So sometimes, you know, different personalities, like some people are gifted with a personality that's very easy to let things go. And others just want to hold on tight to their ideas and, oh, they can, I can't sacrifice. If I sacrifice any of it, then I won't be an artist. It's, there's a balance of, of being able to do what you love and then admitting to yourself that you don't want to do it in your room you know, for your own pleasure. Um, and if you don't want to do it in your room for your own pleasure, then you need to be pragmatic and kind of understand how radio works, how the live stage works, you know, how the business works to some degree. That's, that's really important.